Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. We are the Globetrotters. My name is Leon. So I'd like to say that we're currently living in a day and age where technology is constantly advancing. So in our education system nowadays, kids are using devices such as tablets and other tools to help further their education. So our product, Trotter, is a levitating interactive globe <clears throat> that will help teach kids about geography by telling them various facts and information about cities and countries across the globe. And it has been built with ease of accessibility for people with disabilities in mind. So it can be controlled through gesture controls and voice commands as well. And to give you a little overview of how it works, you can go up to Trotter and ask for a specific location, and it will rotate to that location on the globe, as well as update the little display you see there with some relevant information, as well as some pictures to tell you information about that location. So our vision was to levitate either doing a physical globe or a virtual globe. Now you may be wondering, what do I mean by a virtual globe? A virtual globe is us essentially projecting an image into a clear acrylic globe to have it appear as is actually uh, the globe itself. So this way we can be as dynamic as possible showing a wide range of videos or images onto the globe. And the physical globe levitation is the classic school globe that we see in our schools. And now you may be wondering how we're actually doing the levitation. So we're essentially using electromagnets and that will be explained more by Chris. All right. So we've all played with uh, permanent magnets, right? They either attract or repel. Um, for our design, we decided to use the repulsion force of two permanent magnets to maintain the lift of our globe. All right. And on the screen right here, we have our two per permanent magnets that we decided to use. Um, in the uh, base of our system, the, uh, we'll have this uh, ring magnet, which will stay stationary. And another levitating magnet, the permanent magnet, will be located in the bottom inside the globe. Right? And as you can see, when the globe and levitating magnet are perfectly centered above the ring magnet, it experiences only two forces, the force of gravity and the repulsion force. All right? So we all know that this can't happen, can't stay permanent, like right there. Um, it will experience some kind of deviations. So when the globe deviates a little bit to one side or the other, another force will be introduced into the system. Uh, and it's an attractive magnetic force from the top of the ring magnet and the bottom of the levitating magnet. So in order to counter this, we need to introduce another force to bring it back to center. Right? And the, the, how we're going to do that is with the force of electromagnets to produce a magnetic field to bring it back towards center. And to talk about that more is rent. Okay, so as Chris stated, realistically, it's impossible to levitate two magnets just by itself. So in order to combat that, we need to implement a feedback control system. So to do that, we are using our four electromagnets. Our four hand-wound electromagnets, as you can see in the top left corner. So the way they're, they're oriented, there's four inside the, the base ring magnet. And as you can see, the two red ones, these two are paired in series, and the two white ones, they are also paired in series. So the reason for this is, let's say, the levitating magnet starts to hover over the west, the west magnet. Then we will send a current going, flowing through the west magnet, west electromagnet, and that will send a, a, a force that will push the levitating magnet towards the east end. And if we have to go the opposite way, then we'll just re reverse the current. So to be able to determine the positioning of our levitating magnet, we have to utilize something known as Hall effect sensors. Hall effect sensors detect the slightest change in magnetic in a magnetic field. So in order to actually determine where exactly our levitating magnet is and determine, determine it quickly, we have to utilize our feedback control system and our, our PIC 24, which Mark will talk about. All right, so as for the brain of our levitation system, where our goal was to implement a proportional integral der derivative control using a PIC 24 microcontroller. So from the data from the sensors previously discussed, the microcontroller will determine errors from the equilibrium position and use these errors to then decide in which direction and with, with how much force uh, we, we have to move the levitating magnet to keep it in stability. This information is then passed on to two H-bridge circuits via two logic, uh, two logic signals and two pulse width modulated signals. Uh, these circuits 
are what will allow us to actually set the polarity on each pair of electromagnets, as well as provide the necessary high currents to provide the actual forces on the electromagnets. And uh, now to discuss the design of our physical design of our levitation system, I'll pass it on to Andres. Thank you, Mark. <clears throat> so our levitation base has two printed circuit boards. Uh, these circuit boards not only connect all our elements together, they also provide a stable structure to uh, hold our, our system in place. <clears throat> As you can see from the pictures, in the top board we place our Hall effect sensors. Uh, this, this keeps the Hall, the Hall effect sensors in a fixed position, which uh, gives us a more stable uh, reading of the, of the magnetic field. <clears throat> now um, on the bottom image you can see how uh, we're clamping our magnet, uh, our uh, permanent magnet, our, our elect electromagnets using our bo uh, both of our printed circuit boards. So now that you've learned about our physical globe, I uh, want to talk a little bit, a little bit more about our uh, virtual approach to the problem. <clears throat> so um, like Leon explained, we're projecting an image of the Earth into a, an acrylic sphere. And you might be wondering how we, we accomplish that, how we make it look like, a, like an actual globe. So the way we do that is by placing <coughs> a 180 degree fisheye lens in a small opening at the bottom of our globe. Um, and we place a projector which shines a, a very particular image of, our, of, our, of the Earth into the uh, fisheye lens. Now the lens bends the image and wraps it around the globe from within. <coughs> um, we wanted to make this approach uh, interactive as well, uh, so that the user can give commands, uh, like change the uh, rotation, the velocity of that direction, as well as other functions. We did that uh, by using Python scripts controlled from the uh, Raspberry Pi. <clears throat> now, Leon said that uh, we, we did both of these globes, uh, the physical and the projected version. Um, both of these globes are different, yet they use the same user interface. Uh, and I, I want to welcome Brian to explain more about our, our interface. All right, thanks, Andres. So because the user interacts with our device in order to learn about different geographical areas around the world, we needed to come up with a way to present that information to the user. So in order to do so, we created a graphical user interface written in HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And this is shown on the seven inch display in front of the globe. Um, like Andres and Leon said, uh, the display is the same across both of our solutions that we proposed. And um, uh, when the user requests for a location, such as go to San Diego, this is the main page that's shown on that display. So this page basically has uh, basic information about the location, such as the name, some general information, some images of the location. But the user does have the option to also um, look at more details about the location that they're currently on. So when they do that, the page updates and it just shows more information about that location. They also have the ability to navigate to other locations that are similar to the one that they searched for. So when the user asks, this window will pop up and it'll list um, several different locations that also match that search term. So now that you've seen a little bit about our um, front end, I'm going to talk more about our back end also. So this is basically our back end flowchart. Um, after the user requests for a location, such as go to San Diego, we take that location and pass it into a set of Python functions as a string. So these Python functions are responsible for querying our database and finding countries and state matches. And then after that, it's gonna make a web request to an API called Teleport API, which um, will match a list of cities for us. So those matches are then um, used to generate a JSON file output, which is then passed to our graphical user interface and our um, Alexa voice service to um, present the information to the user and also generate verbal responses that the user can listen to. Um, while all that's happening, we're also making a web request to our Flickr API, which is responsible for downloading images and storing them locally on our Raspberry Pi. Um, to talk a little bit more about our voice and gesture control interfaces, I'm going to introduce Kevin. Good morning. I'm going to talk to you about the voice and gesture interfaces. Our gesture controller was designed to allow users to interact with the globe in a natural way. Uh, it was designed so that a child can walk up to it and start playing with little instruction. The gesture controller also can detect whenever someone walks up to it. From the animation you can see, you can rotate the globe east, you 
can rotate the globe west, you can zoom in on the map, you can zoom out on the map, you can select items from the GUI, and you can stop the globe from rotating using the gesture controller. Moving on to the voice interface. The voice interface was designed to allow to give our users a hands-free option for interacting with the globe. Whenever the user speaks, their command is transmitted to the Alexa voice service in the cloud for natural language processing. The command is then sent to our main control unit on the Raspberry Pi. The Pi utilizes our databases as well as API calls to generate verbal responses for the, for the, uh, for the user. It also generates control signals for the GUI and for the Globe controller. With the voice interface, you can say things like, take me to New York, tell me more information, who are the Globe Trotters? where have I visited? You can also ask for help with using the voice and gesture control among other uh, queries. Uh, next with the budget is Jake. All right, so we started with $1,500 from our sponsors, and like Leon said, we came up with two solutions to do either the physical globe or the virtual globe, and we decided to pursue, pursue them both. And uh, either way, we're gonna need a strong control system. So we spent 30% of our budget on sensors, microcontrollers, the A-fridge, and the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the virtual globe is approximately 20% of our budget, which includes the projector, the lens, and the uh, semi-clear sphere. The physical globe is about 5% of our budget, and it's uh, cheaper because there's not gonna be any projection. Um, and this includes the actual globe that you see in classrooms, as well as the motors for rotation. Uh, the command module makes up about 17% of our budget, and the magnets uh, about six. Everything else is shipping, tax, and replacement parts, which make up the miscellaneous. Um, for our single, um, our single model will be around $45, and this will still have the gesture interface and the voice control um, command module that you'll be able to rotate left or right. Um, our virtual globe is a little more expensive because of the projection, um, but it'll still be able to rotate left or right and project the globe that you see. For our milestones in February, we decided on one sure way to levitate the globe because there's multiple different ways, not just magnets. We could have used air or um, water jets or something like that. Uh, in March, we were able to get the voice and gesture control to work with our command module. In February, or in um, April, we were able to uh, finish constructing the base for our globe as well as tested our printed circuit boards. And we also finished testing our control system to make sure that it's doing what we want when the magnet moves forward, then the um, electromagnets turn on and try to move it back to the center. Um, we need to optimize our control system a little bit more um, and get the right numbers so we can uh, actually levitate it, but we are working on it and it'll be hopefully up and running by tomorrow during design day. And I will give it back to Leon. So, um I hope you guys enjoy our presentation based on Trotter and learn a little bit about levitation. So our future of Trotter is hopefully we can have it in museums, schools, and households. So it can teach the general public about geography in a fun, interactive manner. Thank you guys very much.